We're back for another round of training. I am here, Colin, and I'm with Philip. Hey, guys. And what we're going to do is focus on uh, integrating a flash texture into your game development through Scaleform. And we'll use Adobe Flash CS6. We'll do a little XML typing. And then we'll go into the editor with uh, Flowgraph to change a texture, or a specifically a flash texture, dynamically in the game. So yeah. I guess we could do it. Exactly. So what we did is we actually pre-prepared uh, a UI element right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, or if you don't have this file already, we'll create this file in libs UI UI elements under your assets directory, and then call it whatever you like. In this case, we call it menu tutorial.xml, but the name does not matter one bit. Uh, to explain what co is contained inside, we first start with the UI elements node. This indicates a category of multiple UI elements. Uh, I think in this case, uh, mm -hmm. we can reference the game SDK where you have menus and then the, on the opposite end, it would be HUD. Exactly. So you have the menu and you have the HUD, various types of UI. And in this case, we have the menus category only containing our menu tutorial right here. And the menu tutorial itself has a few attributes allowing us to specify what type of input events we want to receive. And those are all Boolean events, correct? Exactly. So you simply say zero, or you say one. If you want it, you say one. If you don't want it, you say zero. Uh, in this tutorial, we won't actually be handling these events, but we will be specifying in these values as one to indicate that we would be interested in them at some future point. Uh, the name of this UI element then is menu tutorial. And the actual file that we're loading is menututorial.gfx. This is a compiled version of the SWF file output by Adobe Flash. And it's loaded from the UI directory. Keep in mind that we were in the UI elements directory, but the actual file here is loaded from here. So then we actually specify what we want to do with the source file itself or the file, not source, sorry. In our case, we simply want to specify a few functions. Uh, for example, update text, which will update the string value of a text box and then start rendering that immediately. What this does is maps a new flow graph node to this function. And whenever the flow graph node is triggered, we then send the or trigger the function in ActionScript. Should be fairly straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that we are aware of that, we're going to go ahead and start Flash CS6. It's important to note that with our scale form implementation that we have currently in CryEngine, Flash CS6 is the highest Flash that you can use because we require ActionScript 2.0 in creation. Exactly. And that is why when we select create new, we actually do ActionScript 2.0. Keep in mind that any of your options will not work. ActionScript 3.0 is currently too recent and will not work with the engine. The first thing we can do is change the resolution. We'll simply go for uh, 720p. If you want, you can change this to 1080p or any resolution you want. But keep in mind that this does affect performance. Rendering at a higher resolution does take a bit more from your computer and your user's computers as well. So be a bit careful when you select the resolution you want. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll simply drag in a text box, uh, select a font, let's go for Times New Roman. See, can I type something in here? Times New Roman. Uh, make sure that it's set to dynamic text since we will want to be updating it at runtime. Untick selectable and render the text as HTML. Initially, we'll simply say test right here, mm -hmm. very audibly to the user, and then switch over to the actions window. The way we open this is we right click the first frame. Keep in mind that we aren't actually using multiple frames for this example, and press actions. In my case, I had the actions window open already, but if you didn't, simply press actions and it will pop up. I think also the hockey for it is F9. Oh yeah, I didn't know that, nice. Mm -hmm. 
Then we can add the function that we exposed in, uh, sorry, update text in the UI element. So called update text, lowercase u, and then a text value. So my text string. What we also forgot to do is set an instance name. This is what we'll be referring to in code in order to know which text box we want to set the text of. Uh, in this case, we'll just say my text box. Then go back, say my text box dot text equals my text. If we want to test this very quickly, we can simply run it right away below and say test two. Uh, maybe that works, no? So what we'll see is that the output window, exactly, the output window tells us that we need to embed fonts that need to be accessed at runtime. This means that we tell Flash to store the font that we want to use, in this case, Times New Roman, and all the characters. If we don't, it will only store the characters that we had in the seam at the time. But we want everything and expose it to action script. And simply export again by pressing uh, control enter and see what happens. See, it still didn't update, right? So update text, my text box dot text equals. And the question is why did this not work? Let's go to font embedding again. Times New Roman is what we use, right? Mm -hmm. And it's they use export. Export for runtime sharing? No, that shouldn't be necessary, actually. So, let's see. And it works on the second attempt. Interesting. Either way, this is how it works. So, if we remove this function now, it should say test once again. Okay. And add the function again, and it should say test two. So pretty straightforward. We invoke the function and we override a text value with the string we pass in. Okay. Yeah. And since we don't want to override this by default, we'll just remove that function call and save this to our project directory right here. Keep in mind that what we're saving right now is the source file and not the runtime asset that the engine will load. And we wanted to call this menu tutorial, right? Mm -hmm. So that is saved. And then if we press control, uh, enter, we then have the pretty, asset here. Pretty much that's the publish uh, exactly. command. I believe there is a way to do that in here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's simply publish right here, right? Yes. Yeah, and there you go. And it's also good to note, you can go to the publish settings and remove the HTML. Yeah, that is good to know. So then we can actually close flash. That's all we need to do. And we actually want to compile this asset in order to optimize it for scale form. It is possible to modify the UI elements file to use the SWF file directly. However, for shipping purposes, we recommend that you optimize this. I've also noticed in some of my own uh, work that mm -hmm. you'll have memory issues. It'll actually just exactly. crash. Yeah. So whenever you can, optimize it. And the way we do this is that we go to the CryEngine install. So program files, x86, Crytek, CryEngine Launcher, Crytek once again, CryEngine 5.2, Tools, and then GFX Export. And what we do is we simply drag this file right over GFX Export, and we'll see the GFX file appear right away. It's a bit bigger, but trust me when it's better for what Scaleform needs in order to load and handle the asset. Uh, then we can simply start by opening the editor to actually test this asset. Sounds good. Yep. Let's see if the editor will pop up. Yeah, and we can load a level. Uh, good old example. Oh, yes. And if we switch to perspective view, we see everything right here. Now, what we could do is simply do a quick test where we create a dummy flow graph that we won't be saving. Add a start node. And then, oh, sorry, go to add node, UI, display, and display. Simply move output to show, and also select which element we want to show. And this popped up on the wrong screen. Let me move this over quickly. Or less quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and select the menu tutorial example we have. Keep in mind that this is detected automatically, so if we drop in a new XML file and restart, we'll see that right away. 
Uh, and then what we can do is simply see if we go into game mode, we see the text. There we go. Perfect. So it's test right away. Then what we could also test is go to UI, functions, menu tutorial, update text. And then whenever we then start, we override the test to say CryEngine. Let's see if this works then. Yeah, it's a bit cut off, but there you go. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Good. So I guess that kind of covers the basic understanding of how exactly we would uh, go through getting a flash texture into the engine and mm -hmm. calling it up. We can go in other ways uh, in future videos and how to interface with this in C++, but for a basic onboarding, this probably uh, works quite well. Yeah. All right. So thank you, Philip, for showing us how to interface with Scaleform and no Flash. Problem. And uh, I look forward to other videos. Yeah, for sure.